Ed Norton, uh, his contract fell through with the Hulk sequel. Well, there were a lot of issues on the Hulk. Or, I'm sorry, because, with the Avengers. Well, Norton, when Norton took a pass at the Hulk script and turned it into a little bit of a longer character-driven movie, and Marvel shrunk it back down to like an hour and like 40 minute action blockbuster so there was so many burn bridges by the end of that one like the money probably wouldn't have gotten ed norton back for this anyway you know i and to be honest i'm kind of glad norton's out yeah his life ruffalo Mm -hmm. is is a great bruce banner he just carries himself with that unassuming manner that just makes him very believable as this guy with a monster inside him for some reason I agree. Kind of a weariness about him that I didn't. I don't really remember seeing from the other guys. I liked him quite a lot. So I, I'm, I'm kind of glad Edward Norton dropped out too. And kind of his loss, our gain, all worked out in the end. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Let's talk about Loki. Uh, Tom Hiddleston. I think. I mean, I was. He was good in the Thor movie. He is superb here as a villain. <laughs> I, I was just. I mean, not. If you know Loki's backstory, I mean, he is an Asgardian god. He's a, a very powerful villain. But they didn't. He didn't play it as I'm probably the most powerful person in this room. He just played it as like this kind of impetuous child, very angry <laughs> at his circumstances. Not really truly evil, but like a villain that you could sympathize with almost. And I, I dug that. I dig villains like that more than you know just the typical baddie. Um, and we might get into some spoilers here because we're gonna Loki. The Thor movie and the Captain America movie, actually, they had a lot to do with uh, the story surrounding the Avengers. The, uh, a lot was pulled from those two movies primarily, more than Iron Man 1 or 2, or the Hulk, for that matter. Yeah. Uh, which, which I dug. It seems like, uh, you know, uh, at the end of Captain America, uh, he crashes his uh, the Nazi plane into the Arctic takes the Tesseract down to the bottom of the ocean with him, uh, and Tony Stark's dad goes down and finds it, and then finds Cap and brings him in, uh, and that's basically the what the main objective of the movie is getting the ha- of the Avengers is getting their hands on this Tesseract and stopping Loki from uh, bringing the alien horde, the alien army, down to invade Earth, um, and then Thor, obviously Loki's brother, uh, Loki was also the main villain in in the Thor movie. Um, so there's a, an, a, a nice little family dynamic there as well uh, that you get to see continued because Thor actually does you know love his brother and and wants yeah. him to come back to Asgard and you know be reunited and do all that good stuff and I like that I thought it was a nice bit of I thought that was great crafting by Whedon you know to get that there weren't a lot of lines uh, devoted to it but it worked you know the idea got across. Yeah, they had a couple of conversations about it, and I thought, I mean, I thought it did. They were, the movie is so big, and there's so much going on, you need at least, like, one kind of personal connection story, kind of a through line, and uh, that did it. The Thor Loki actually did it. And I liked Loki, too. I mean, I liked the performance. He was kind of a sniveling, squirming little dickweed of a villain, which was fun. Um, I was kind of confused as to, like, exactly how powerful he was at the beginning, because he, like, came up when he bullets couldn't kill him, when he was, like, blasting folk left and right. And then later he gets slapped around by some of the other Avengers. But uh, oh, just after I got it. comfortable just with say that, it. say what? Go ahead. You can spoil it. The whole I know you're talking about. bitch slaps Loki oh, in yeah, such a humorous <laughs> manner. It is ridiculous. I can't wait till everybody gets to see it because it is probably the most hysterical moment in superhero movie we have seen to date. It definitely got the biggest laugh in the show that I yeah. went to. It got such a big laugh. I have no idea. I still have no idea what the Hulk said to Loki after he beat the shit out of him. He says, <laughs> "It probably uh, wasn't very coherent." Uh, well, Loki. No, actually, Loki says uh, something along the lines like, "Enough! I have had enough of this. I am a god." Right. And, and Hulk grabs him and, and throws him around for a little while. And as he's walking away, he says, "Puny god." Ah, that's oh, what I figured. Funny. Nice. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it was it was pretty fucking amazing. And then you get. Uh, <laughs> The the Hulk Thor moment, the Hulk Thor moment where they're battling and there's a pause and all of a sudden Hulk Hulk checks Thor's chin and it was amazing. That got another <laughs> huge laugh in the theater yeah. that I was really impressed by. That they actually, uh, you know, they they it, it, like we went back to okay, these guys aren't really friends. You know, even though they <laughs> they battled side by side and just took down this big monster, they're not they're not friends at all. 
And that's the best part, is, like, that last, like, it, it followed exactly what I kind of thought the movie would follow. Like, that last hour, hour 15 minutes was, like, knockdown, drag out, slugfest versus alien army. But that first half of the movie, they're fighting each other a lot. And I think yeah. that's the best, that's some of the best part about it, is that, you know, there's a triple, there's a three-way between Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America. And then Thor and Hulk get to throw down. Um, I love well, let's, that. Let's I, make it clear that we're not talking about a devil's three-way. I owe. It was, it was actually a, a, a free-for-all match. Yeah. Don't want anybody getting the wrong impression when they go <laughs> no, see this movie. No, of course movie. not. That would, that's not the kind of crowd they want. <laughs> no. But no, yeah, you're absolutely right. It was uh, between the first time... Uh, the, when they first got together and Thor finally appears and... Iron Man, I I kind of it was that felt a little bit forced to me, to be honest. Which bit? Uh, how Iron Man progressed through the movie from being, you know, the guy that was in the Quinjet and just being like, I don't take orders from anybody, I attack, and, and going after Thor, to the guy who's sacrificing himself. I thought that could have been expanded on a little bit. I mean, I understand this is a huge movie and you can't fit in everything, although apparently there's a three-hour cut that we'll hopefully see on the Blu-ray. Yeah, I hope so. But I just... And and Downey Jr. got so much screen time to begin with. I mean, Mm -hmm. he probably would have took over the movie at that point. But I just felt like that transition from Iron Man, the the lone wolf, to Iron Man, the, the Avengers team member, could have been expanded on a little bit more. I mean, there was that one moment when he's talking to Captain America, and Captain America accuses him of being, like, the guy who wouldn't sacrifice himself, so he don't let a fire under his ass. But, I mean, and they were always going to give Downey Jr. the big arc. They were always going to give him, you know, the big heroic moment at the end. Because whether we like it or not, if there is a star to the movie, it's him. Although, obviously, it's an ensemble piece. He's kind of the, the, the big guy. Yeah, he's the premier draw. Sure. Yeah. Was that it? Was that your... Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to continue. No, that was it. I was gonna... <laughs> oh, no, okay, you're absolutely okay, right. I, I, I have another point I can... Uh, sorry, go on. No, no, go ahead. Okay, I have another point I could make is that um, some have criticized the middle section for being kind of too talky and not enough action. Like, people come to this movie to see an action movie, and they were like, now they're on a ship, and they're arguing with each other. This is dull. I don't agree with that, but that, that, that ha- I have seen that Kristen leveled against it somewhere. Well, that's such a such a bass act best backwards argument to make because you're not going to please everybody because some people literally no. want to go see a two hour and 20 minute action movie where they don't develop anything at all mm-hmm. and like you know go see a michael bay movie right exactly or some people will go in and go oh my god there was so much fighting why can't they like <laughs> talk every now and again it was so loud there's you're never going to find you're never going to please the, the extremes but you can get a happy medium and i think this was certainly more action heavy than the like the four or five prequel movie so to speak but <laughs> it certainly didn't like lack for some plot development I mean it had to be there no yeah, no, and, yeah and you're, you're absolutely right uh, I'm sorry Dan please go ahead no I was going to say I agree with you I, 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 I thought the sections in the middle maybe not I, I mean the fight it's kind of hard to argue with how great that was and fun to watch but the middle sections added a ton to it Yeah. I mean I, I love the fact that they were talking and I've always liked Whedon's dialogue a lot and he had a lot of good zingers here and there. There were, I mean, the, the the big laughs, like when Hulk smashes Loki came, but there were a lot of smaller laughs in between when they were just talking to each other. Like little turns of phrases that were fun. And it was good to see the audience react to stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. I Okay, let's talk about Coulson's death. Yeah. Uh... That, I think that was the catalyst for the team coming together, uniting for the greater good, blah, 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 blah. Not the best moment in the movie, uh, I thought it felt really forced. I thought it was a huge mistake. After, you know, sitting there and thinking about it for a little while, this guy was the guy that kind of, even more so than Nick Fury, that was kind of tying these movies in together. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, I think killing him off, that c- and, you know, he was... I understand that they, they were going for a big impact moment and killing Coulson, uh, considering how how enjoyable he was on screen... It seemed, it probably seemed like a good idea at the time, but I don't know. It just, I don't think it was handled correctly. I don't think that uh, it was probably the right person to kill off. I mean, shit, kill off Hawkeye. If you're not going to use him, kill him off. 
Well, they didn't well, use him, and I love Hawkeye, no, but they didn't. did not use him. If I was Jeremy Renner, I would seriously consider not signing up for the sequel unless I was <laughs> going to get a more expanded role. I'm sure he will. She'll be in the Blackwater uh, movie. I mean, I, I think the that? problem with that is is that, um, I mean, I agree with it didn't quite work. It's like, okay, he died. I don't know why they're really rallying around him. I, I agree. I, I think they should have killed someone bigger, but I think the problem is you can't. I mean, Whedon is known for killing off people we like, but when he makes his own stuff, he can kill whoever he wants. But he's not going to be allowed to kill an Avenger. If right. They... There's. I mean, yeah, you're, I'm sure Jim Rimmerer has some back contract into another movie. Scarlett Johansson probably has the same deal. And you already have sequels plotted for all like three of your big bad, your, your big heroes anyway. So at this point, you had like, you had very few options as to who do you actually want to kill to get that kind of moment. So mm-hmm. you're not killing Nick Fury because Samuel Jackson signed a nine picture. <laughs> oh crap! Uh oh! Did we lose Joe? A, to everybody, which is the only person you could have killed that a you would be allowed to kill, and b should have some sort of impact on the rest of them. I mean, the moment actually, itself. Yeah. I think that's probably why the moment didn't work for me. Uh, as intended was because we've seen Coulson in all of these movies, but we haven't really seen like you. You mentioned that w- Whedon could create characters and, and kill anybody he wants, but Whedon would have also spent a season or a, you know sure, fifteen minutes getting you attached to that character, right. you know. I mean, which we really didn't have. I mean, we've known Coulson yeah. as this kind of go between uh, between all these movies and all these characters. But outside of uh, some witty banter with Tony Stark about tasing him uh, and then going home and watching, like, America's Top Model or something, we really haven't seen a lot of character <laughs> development there. <laughs> so it, I, for me, it fell flat. I can understand if other people disagree, um, and, and that's fine. But after that, it's like when we moved past that and we got to this, this mega battle royale downtown Manhattan – the movie, the movie just got you know it was completely forgotten. the The movie went yeah, off the hook. Yeah. I was you know blown away by the last twenty five minutes. Let's talk about Captain America's costume. It looks really <laughs> dumb. Uh, I thought his costume in the first Avengers looked better. Would have translated better. I mean, he is a super soldier. You know, I, I understand that they were going for like the classic Captain America look. But how could anybody on that set be like, oh, hey, Chris, you look good in that costume? That helmet needs to die a horrible, horrible death. Yeah, I think the I mentioned stick yesterday. Helmet. <laughs> that, uh, I don't he... understand. <laughs> dick helmet. That he, 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 he looked fine when the helmet was off and he was in the costume. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, the helmet kind of looks no, I, really I dorky. No, I completely agree with you. When as soon as the helmet comes off, you're like, oh, that looks pretty all right. Because you got Chris Evans looking like Captain America doing shit. But that helmet just kills me every time. That needs to... Yeah. I don't know what... They need to redesign on that stat. Oh, no. If we... we Captain America 2 and uh, the sequel to Thor, next year, next summer, I, that gives them a long time to, to redesign. Because <laughs> we can't be the only ones. No. We, I, I'm no. sure Marvel sat there and said, Cap looks like a fucking dork. <laughs> There wasn't a moment in that movie until Captain America jumps down on the cab and starts spouting orders to the cops where I bought Captain America. Until that moment. And that was the last 20 minutes of the movie. You know? Mm-hmm. I was just like, there's no reason for Cap to be in this. He's doing nothing except, you know, helping out Tony Stark when he needed it on the helicarrier. You know? But you get to that moment and you see why Cap is Cap. And it's like, okay. Now I get it. But that costume was doing him no favors. <laughs> yeah, in a, in, a, in a movie full of kind of awesome costumes, because I think Marvel did pretty well, his was the one that you just went, I can't take you seriously. <laughs> yeah, it, and it, it worried me, because it, it was a reminder of all the piss-poor superhero movies we've had before and all the just terrible costume designs yes. that, have, that we've seen in the past. Not pointing any fingers. Daredevil. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I said it. I brought it up. <laughs> Fuck Ben Affleck. I love him as a director, but he did Daredevil. Fuck him. Um, oh, what was another? Oh, the original Captain America, if oh, you've yeah. ever seen Oof. that movie. Ooh, yeah, that's man. rough. That was rough. <laughs> it's uh, like a motorcycle helmet he's wearing. It's ridiculous. That's right. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, the Fantastic Four movies. Ooh. Mm. Except for Jessica Alba. She looks good in anything. What, what can you do? True. Yeah, it's hard to do. <laughs> okay, so secret ending. Secret uh, scene in the credits. Oh, actually, there's two interesting things about this. 